and we'll just welcome everybody slowly as they trickle in. We have a large audience today, folks, so please turn off your cameras uh, and your audio. We will have a robust Q&A session at the end that will be moderated by Barbara uh, Santos and myself. And so we're gonna have everyone put their questions in the chat space. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Are you in the South Bay, Jim? I am. I'm in San Jose, where it's going to be close to 100 degrees today, they said. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> we'll see. I had my overhead fan on um, before I joined the call, and I, it was blowing right into my eyes, and I was sitting here in front of the camera constantly blinking, so I turned that off. So I'm going to sit here and bake with all of you. It's going to be great. I'm baking in San Leandro in the nice. East Bay. <laughs> oh, you're probably warmer than us. Um, it hasn't, hasn't gotten really hot yet, but it will. It, it always got, does in the late afternoon. That's yeah. when it really ramps up. Yeah. So. Okay, people are coming. It's good to see all these smiling faces out there. It's good to see people. Right? Hi, people. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, people. <laughs> oh, I can't. Hugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when out walking my, my dogs, I see other people walking and it's like we all look at each other i see you <laughs> yeah i've noticed bigger smiles when you're out with they're walking the dog it's kind of nice it's yeah. sad and it's nice at the same time it's true <laughs> hopefully they will all um oh, hopefully hi everyone. guys hi, hi. <laughs> hello I'm John Burns. Hi, John. You know, we have a large audience today. Hi, so, I, so I'm going to turn your camera off because we're just about ready to get started. We have over okay. 100, 100 people um, reserved today. So it's going to get... Well, I'm very excited to know what, what, what uh, Jim's going to tell us. So I'm ready to rock and roll. So, Jeff, yeah, <laughs> <go ahead. laughs> All right. What happened? <laughs> oh, my God. Did I... What happened to him? There he is. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So let's just wait one more minute. Okay. And then I will introduce everybody. <clears throat> I'm going to mute you, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, why don't we go ahead and get started? And here comes everybody. All right, so hi, welcome everyone to this discussion about ebook publishing with Jim Azevedo. My name is Taryn Edwards, and I am one of the librarians at the Mechanics Institute of San Francisco. Um, there I manage the writer's activities. Um, and uh, what else do I do? I guess I'm a librarian there too. <laughs> um, we also have with us today, we have Barbara Santos, who is marketing director of the San Francisco Writers Conference. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi, Barbara. Hi. <laughs> I just wanted to alert everybody that this uh, meeting will be recorded for future viewing. It will be posted on our the Mechanics Institute's YouTube channel. And Barbara, I haven't told you this, but I got in. Yes. Yay! <laughs> Past videos will um, slowly trickle on to our um, dual uh, to the Mechanics Institute social media and YouTube channel and to the San Francisco Writers Conference and to the Women's National Book Association's um, social media channels. So um, 
we have we have a lot of stored content that you can review um, at your leisure. So um, anyway, we will be recording and I just wanted to alert you that by attending this program, your name or your image might show up in the film. So if you have a problem with that, please change your name uh, or turn off your camera. And um, that way, um, that way you're not in the recording. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, this event and all the other ones that we have hosted in the past and will continue to do so in the future has been produced in partnership with the San Francisco Writers Conference and the San Francisco chapter of the Women's National Book Association. Now, these two entities I work closely with um, at the Mechanics Institute to provide writing classes as well as other uh, learning experiences usually related to writing. Um, that are relevant to the San Francisco Bay Area. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker today who is Jim Azevedo, who is the marketing director at Smashwords, uh, who is the, uh, Smashwords is the largest distributor of self-published eBooks. So if you are thinking of writing your book now and publishing it, um, it's, it's worth it to poke around on their website and take a look at their best practices. Um, so since 2008, Smashwords has helped nearly 150,000 authors, uh, publishers, and literary agents around the world, releasing over half a million titles. Uh, and they also distribute globally. So um, to, uh, to ebook retailers, uh, subscription services, and most importantly, libraries. So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jim personally is a convert from the Silicon Valley tech industry. He earned his indie cred uh, because <laughs> uh, from 18 years of drumming, recording, and touring with an indie punk rock metal band. Um, so maybe he'll bust out a few riffs uh, later today. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, he is also a certified nutrition consultant and a really cool guy. We will put his um, Twitter and contact information in the chat space once we get started. Um, the way the event will work today is Jim will give us a short presentation and uh, then we'll start the Q&A. And someone is we are yeah, viewing someone's that. screen. I'm going to stop that. There we go. How did he? Um, sorry about that. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> uh, we have, a, like I said, we have a large audience. If you want to um, ask a question, please post it in the chat room. And we, after Jim's conversation, uh, Barbara and I will fold those questions into what I hope is a dynamic conversation with Jim. Um, meanwhile, thank you very much, and let's get started. Take it away, Jim. All right. Well, thanks, Taryn, and thank you, Barbara. Um, let me, I'm going to share my screen real quickly here. And I have to tell you, um, as I'm getting the screen sharing ready, that um, I'm really excited about the discussion part of this. So right now, this part will take about, oh, 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll open it up for the fun part. Real quickly, I just wanted to say thank you so much to the San Francisco uh, Writers Conference and Mechanics Institute and the Women's National Book Association for the invitation in the first place. I really appreciate it. But also thank all of you, all of the attendees, because I know that you have a million other things you could be doing right now, but you're trusting me with your time. So I really, really appreciate it. Welcome to ebook publishing in a post COVID-19 world. In the next several minutes here, I'll share with you some of what we're experiencing from Smashwords perspective in terms of how the, how the pandemic has been um, impacting our global ebook retail partners. From there, I'll talk about some of the challenges that we're all currently facing and that we may continue to face for perhaps the short term, but at least the next several months or maybe a year or longer. And then I'll talk about some other things that you can do right now to help you navigate through these troubled times and maybe, just maybe help you come out stronger on the other end. Now, quickly, I must humbly submit to you that when news of the pandemic first came across my awareness, my, my news feed 
at the end of last year, I perhaps didn't take it as seriously as I should have. Um, I thought, you know, we've seen cases like this before. And my first thought was, well, how, was, how bad is this gonna get? As a matter of fact, I really didn't think twice about um, buying some concert tickets for some friends of mine and I. Actually, they're my bandmates. Um, our 20 year anniversary is coming up. And to put it frankly, I've been working from home since 2011. I have a five year old daughter at home. I don't get out very often. So when I heard about this band coming to town, I figured I'll buy these guys, my bandmates, some tickets to this show essentially forcing them to go out with me. Um, the concert was scheduled for March 7th. And leading up to that date, obviously the news of the pandemic was getting, um, it was becoming more and more of a daily news um, item. My guitarist who has some health issues decided to, to bow out um, wisely. He's got a couple of small children at home. He felt it's probably the best idea if I don't go. But I and um, and my three friends, three other friends, we found a replacement for my guitarist. So I and three others went and I was somewhere down there front row center with about a thousand plus of my closest, sweatiest friends. And again, that was March 7th. Nine days later, seven counties in the San Francisco Bay Area went on official lockdown. To say I was a wee bit nervous for the next couple of weeks is an understatement. So how bad could it get? worse than I ever imagined possible. I've watched, as all of you have, I'm sure, um, with shock and horror and despair as now millions and millions of people around the world have become infected with the virus. Um, a couple of million people here in the US alone and well over 100,000 lives lost um, here in the US. Just like all of you, Everyday life has changed. Um, going to the park, I have to explain to my little girl that I'm sorry, the, the playground's still shut down, honey. Um, you, not yet, you can't have play dates just yet. And I'm also stuck with telling her that kindergarten that we've all been looking forward to this year may not happen as we expect it to happen. I'm curious as to what's this going to do to our collective psyche, not just as individuals, um, but as consumers, if we're avoiding playgrounds, if we're giving our neighbors wide berth as we're taking our evening strolls or walking the dogs, forced to wave to them from across the street. I'm also curious what it's going to do to our collective psyche as consumers where we have to put on masks and gloves to, to simply go grocery shopping grocery shopping. I'm also curious how this is going to impact our readers as counties, countries start to slowly emerge from the pandemic. Because if we're wearing masks and gloves to grow grocery shopping, how's that going to impact how we feel if grocery shopping is a perceived risk? How's that going to feel if I just wanna go down and visit my corner bookstore to, to pick up a book, a book that's possibly been touched by lots and lots of other people. I mean, who knows, are they infected? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Today, there are some bookish headlines coming out that are also saying things like the, the book business is going to, or is already encountering some of the same struggles that are impacting other industries around the world. These struggles, of course, being closed stores, um, consumers who now have less disposable income as global economies are entering a, a recession. But there is a silver lining. And that silver lining is this. As an author, if you are publishing eBooks, you will probably see higher sales for your eBooks in 2020 than you did in 2019 and possibly in 2021 as well. What we're seeing happening out there is a surge in eBook sales. 
We believe that there are readers who are discovering ebooks for the first time or maybe rediscovering the joys of ebooks, the joys of ebook reading, uh, the convenience and, and risk free experience of ebook shopping, but also ebooks are typically priced less than their print counterparts. If, as an author, if you're a self published author and if you are investigating ebook self publishing for the first time, go for it. Because some of those bookish headlines that I alluded to before are saying things like readers are not buying books in the usual places, the usual places meaning brick and mortar bookstores. But stories like that play into your hands as self published authors because, as a self published ebook author, when you self publish an ebook and distribute that book to global ebook retailers through services like ours, like Smashwords, or if you decide to directly upload yourself, your ebooks aren't just landing on those store shelves here in the US, your ebooks are landing on those virtual store shelves within every country that those global ebook retailers are operating their dedicated ebook stores. So with that, let me share with you some of what we've been, hap what we've been seeing um, as far as the pandemic's impact on some of our ebook retail partners. Here's what's happened in March of this year versus the same period one year ago. Now remember, March was the first month where economies around the world, not whole countries, but different regions, different areas, of the world and our country, of course, started going into lockdown mode. These areas started going into shelter in place for the first time. Here's how the numbers for our top six retail channels performed in March 2020 versus March 2019. This includes more than 475,000 ebook titles in our catalog. So Scribd has been going like gangbusters. If you're not familiar with Scribd, Scribd is an ebook subscription model where readers go to Scribd, they pay a low monthly fee, and then they get access to as many books as they can consume for that um, for that period. Scribd is nice because it, for readers who are price conscious now, it's a way to consume a lot of books without spending a lot of money. But Scribd is different than Amazon's Kindle Unlimited, and that Scribd pays authors based on their retail list price. Overdrive, as you may or may not know, is the largest library aggregator that sends books, even self-published ebooks, to public libraries via Overdrive's catalog. And even Smashwords. So as you all know now, Smashwords is primarily an ebook distributor. However, since day one, going back to 2008, Smashwords has operated a dedicated ebook store at smashwords.com. Even prior to the pandemic, Smashwords, has, our little ebook store at smashwords.com, has been bucking an overall industry tread where ebook sales for the past five or six years have been relatively flat. But sales at our little store have been growing year over year over year for the past four years. And in March, our sales were 17% higher than they were in March 2019. At Kobo, sales dipped a little bit in March. At Apple, the world's second largest ebook retailer behind Amazon, we were surprised that their numbers in March were down a bit too. And Barnes and Noble's numbers weren't very good at all, as you can see. So that was March. And again, countries, municipalities, different areas were just starting to go in lockdown. It wasn't widespread. April, however, was the first month from beginning to end where lockdowns were in place. Take a look at what happened in April. Scribd just exploded. They had record setting sales for the month. It was their, their highest performing months since, their, um, since we've been partnering with them. Overdrive continues to show strong results. Smashwords continues to show strong results. Kobo's numbers ramped up significantly as did Apple's. Unfortunately, Barnes and Noble's April 2020 numbers were still down versus April 2019. This is telling because if it hadn't been for the pandemic, Barnes and Noble's ebook numbers may have been even worse. Let's take a look at what happened in May. So in, in May, trying to advance my slide. In May, 
um, some, some areas started coming out of lockdown for the first time, but as you can see, numbers were still quite high. Ebook sales were still surging fairly significantly. Now this begs the question, do we expect this to continue? Do we expect it to continue forever? No, <laughs> in a word, we don't expect it to continue forever. However, we do expect it to continue, at least for the short term. The short term meaning at least for the next several months and maybe for the next year or year and a half as the world has been thrust into a, a, a global recession, no one really knows when we're going to come out of that recession. So consumers are, they're paying close attention to their disposable income. Um, and consumers aren't necessarily very comfortable venturing out yet um, and going into physical brick and mortar bookstores. We expect that ebook surge to continue for a bit. Um, however, it's worth noting that Let's take a look back in history for a moment, because back circa 2008, there were some voices in the publishing industry who had predicted that ebooks would take over print books, that print books were going to go away. Thankfully, that never happened. But what did happen is that between 2008 and late 2012, early 2013, um, ebooks here in the US exploded. They were growing by double and triple percentage points year over year over year until late 2012, early 2013, where the market for ebooks in the US, consumer books, both fiction and nonfiction, just started to level off. Um, they reached an in equilibrium where ebook sales here in the US represented about 25% of dollar sales and print accounted for 75 to 80% of dollar sales. So while we expect the surge to continue for a little while here, we do expect it to level off once again, probably going back to the levels that we saw prior to the pandemic. So with that said, what are some of the things that you can do to navigate through these challenging times and potentially come out stronger? On the other end, do these three things. First, put your books everywhere. Because as authors, and especially as self-published authors, and especially to those of you who are investigating ebook self-publishing for the first time, you have a couple of major hurdles that you must overcome. Hurdle number one is to write that super awesome book that goes straight to your reader's hearts, that moves your readers to emotionally satisfying extremes, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. But your second hurdle is to make your books as discoverable or as findable as you possibly can. And the best, easiest way to make your books as findable as you possibly can is to put your books everywhere where readers go to find books. That means having your books on those virtual store shelves at all the ebook retailers and on the shelves of public libraries via services like Overdrive. If you decide to go exclusive at one retailer, say Amazon, for example, keep in mind that there are still millions and millions of shoppers who are shopping at other ebook retailers. To those readers, you aren't invisible. You don't even exist. And if you don't exist, you're not purchasable. If you decide to go exclusive at a single retailer, you also miss opportunities when the other retailers experience breakout performance months, like what we've seen has happened with Scribd. Next, price your books lower. As self-published ebook authors, you have an opportunity. Because you're self-publishing, you're in business for yourself. You have much, much lower expenses than say what a, a large traditional publisher would have. Your lower expenses enable you to offer your ebooks for significantly lower prices. And with those lower prices, you can reach more readers. But even with those lower prices, you can still earn more per book sold. Typically, here's what's happening with self published ebook authors. Indie ebook authors are earning between 60 to 80% of their ebooks list price as their royalty. 
Now compare that with a traditionally published ebook author who's earning just 12 to 17% of the list price as their royalty. That means if, if I'm a newer author and I'm getting ready to release my debut novel and I price it at $2.99, my take home is going to be about two bucks. For a traditionally published ebook author to earn that same two bucks, they'd have to price somewhere in the neighborhood of $12.99. So with that, Put yourself in the shoes of your readers, consumers, consumers who are a bit more price conscious now. If you had a choice between two ebooks of seemingly equal quality and one's priced at $2.99 and one's priced at $12.99, which one would you purchase? That's one of your greatest advantages of being a self-published ebook author. Next. Build a platform you can control. I would assume that all of you have heard the term platform ad nauseum. So what is platform? Platform is, think of it like a measure of your fame, but more importantly, think of platform as a measure of your ability to reach your readers. Chances are you know of an author who has thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of Twitter followers or Facebook followers, or maybe you yourself have tens of thousands of Facebook followers. Chances are that um, if you've dealt with Facebook for say longer than a year or two, you may have experienced, you, you may have had a time when you experienced publishing some news that you wanted all your fans to see. And these fans, these are people who have opted in to receive your news on their news feed. They've given permission to hear from you and Earlier, a couple of years ago, you may have put out that news and they all received it and that was fine and well. But then one day may have come along with you if you haven't experienced this, where you, you made a Facebook post. Perhaps you were giving some news that you're going to have an author signing event or that your book release was coming up. But to your dismay, it looked like only a tiny fraction of people even saw it. What happened? Facebook started charging for ads so that authors could expand their reach. So no longer could you reach all of these people who had already given their permission to hear from you. You had to pay for that. So the best way to build a platform you can control is through your private author newsletters, email newsletters. Your email newsletter is ironclad. It will stay with you as you grow your author career. Um, your, your, your email newsletter won't be subject to the whims of social media platforms. It's not susceptible to algorithm changes at any of the retailers. Even if your hosting provider for your website or blog goes down, you still keep your email newsletter and you control it. You control the timing of when your messages go out. You control the content of those messages. So, as a company, when we began thinking about email newsletters, we were thinking about ways in which we could help our authors and publishers build upon their email newsletter lists. And we started tossing around some ideas. We thought, what if we could build a tool that helped our, our authors turbocharge their newsletter signups? What if we could build a tool that enables our authors and our publishers to give their readers and fans early access to new books ahead of its general public release date, sort of as a loyalty reward for those who signed up for their email newsletters. And wouldn't it be cool, we thought, if our authors and publishers could capture reader emails at checkout. In other words, if we gave readers the option to sign up on the spot for the email newsletters of, for the authors that they just purchased their books from. And we thought, wouldn't it be even better if our authors and publishers could provide instant discount incentives at checkout? So when a reader checks out a book that's on presale, they're presented with 25, 50, 75, even 100% off of that book that they're purchasing in exchange for providing their email to the author of that book. And then we decided to go one step further and we thought, what if we made this new tool compatible with multiple publishing strategies? Because we know our authors and publishers have multiple publishing strategies. 
Some like to release their books exclusively, exclusively at Amazon through KDP Select or via Kindle Unlimited. Still others like to distribute widely using services like Smashwords, and others prefer to directly upload their books to the retailers one by one by one. So we took all these ideas and we created a tool. It's called Smashwords Presales. We delivered it um, in December of 2019, and we are probably more excited about Smashwords Presales than we were about Smashwords as a company when we launched in 2008. So it's, it's a new tool for all of you and it's ready now. Before we get into our interactive discussion, I just want to leave you with one final thought. And that thought is your books and your words are possibly more important now than they ever, ever have been. These brief three strategies that I just shared with you, these are not flash in the pan marketing schemes that are going to last a couple of weeks or a month. These are tried and true evergreen best practices that you can leverage going forward um, to build upon and sustain your author careers. So putting your books everywhere, pricing lower and building a platform that you can control will help you sustain, nurture and grow your author careers beyond the pandemic. And with that, let me stop sharing so that I can talk to all of you. Okay. Can we open it up? Yeah, Taryn, I think you're, oh, you're muted, unmuted. Great. I'm unmuted now. Okay. <laughs> you know, I did have a question from Deborah. Yes. Deborah Gish, who emailed me before the event, and she is curious about um, whether or not back cover copy is something one needs to consider or even have when publishing an ebook? That's a good question. And the answer is no. You don't have to worry about your back cover copy, nor do you have to worry about a spine. With an ebook, all you need is the cover. But with that said, you will have the opportunity to provide your book's description as you go through the ebook publishing process, which is that will serve like your, the, your back copy. Great. I've noticed that sometimes at the end of a book, there is uh, something that either leads one to your website or lead to the author's website or leads one to the next book or can you comment anything, comment? About yes, absolutely. So all of you should update the back matter of all of your eBooks um, today and add these four sections. Number one, add an about the author section in the back matter of your book, because chances are if a reader has just discovered your book for the first time, they want to know what makes that mind of yours ticks. And about the author section will help humanize the author behind the story. This doesn't have to be an epic tale, a paragraph or two will do that gives them a sense of who you are as a person, maybe uh, where you're from, what area of the country you reside in now, whether or not you have any hobbies, that sort of thing. Number two, list out all of your existing books that you have, um, and then you can hyperlink those books back to your website or blog so that those readers can learn more about um, those, those other titles. Don't just add titles that you have that are existing. Also include titles on that list for books that are upcoming that haven't even been released yet, books that you may have on pre-order to help you accumulate those pre-orders as well. And again, hyperlink those back to your website or blog so that your readers can learn even more. That was the second thing. The third thing to add to your back matter is a free sample chapter or an excerpt from one of your other books because there is no better time to hook a reader or to keep a reader on your train than at the very moment they finish one of your current books. If it's a new reader and you're talented enough to guide that reader along and hold, the, hold their hand from chapter one on through to the end of your book, 
chances are they're delighted that they've discovered you and they're delighted they just read this this fantastic book of yours but they also might have that little tinge of sadness that little bit of a of a letdown because something that they really enjoyed has just ended so hook them right then and there by giving them a taste of one of your other books especially if one of your other books is another book um, in a series um, where are we? Number four, the fourth thing to add to your back matter is a section that says connect with the author. Add that section and then provide several different options for how your readers can connect with you so that your readers can connect with you in whichever way is the most comfortable for them. So these could be links to your Facebook page or to Twitter or to Instagram or to your email newsletter, definitely do that, or link them back to your website or to your blog. I should also note that when you update your back matter and especially when you provide these, these opportunities for your readers to get in touch with you, having these connections with readers, it's kind of like the holy grail of the book publishing industry. I feel like the largest publishers have been trying to figure out how to do it um, forever, but nobody has a better opportunity to have these interactions, to build these relationships with readers than you, the authors. That's great advice. So really, your first book is the opportunity to really drive your platform growth and just, um, it's really like a springboard for your career as an author. Yes. And I love that the author is the one that's in the driver's seat as far as, uh, as, as, far as driving growth and sales of your book. Absolutely, you are. Um, Let's see, Philip Thorne has a question or at least a comment about Kindle Unlimited, how it blocks your ability to publish on other sites. Is there a way to get around that? Can you publish your book on other sites and then publish to Kindle Unlimited? <laughs> sure, so let me define Kindle Unlimited. So Kindle Unlimited is Amazon's subscription service. So for where for um, a low monthly amount, I think it's still $9.99 a month, um, readers have access to essentially an unlimited amount of, of eBooks. And Kindle Unlimited is powered by Amazon's exclusivity option, which is called KDP Select or Kindle Direct Publishing Select. So to answer the question, you can still have your books listed for sale at Amazon without being exclusive to Amazon. Um, I would never tell anybody not to have their books at Amazon. All of you should have your books listed for sale at Amazon. They're the largest ebook store in the world, but you don't have to go exclusive there. Um, if you are enrolled in KDP Select or Kindle Unlimited, their exclusivity periods last for periods of 90 days at a time. But as an author or publisher, you have to manually go in to turn off that uh, exclusivity period at the end of that 90 days. Amazon will not give you notice that it's ending. They'll just sign you up again and have it roll to the next 90 day period. So if you want to end that exclusivity period, pay attention to when your exclusivity period ends. And only then can you, put, can you list your books at all of the other retailers. I hope that answers the question. I think so, and it's great advice. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to, I just want to underscore or maybe restate that Kindle Unlimited is a part of their exclusivity program. Uh, Linda has a question. She is debuting her book in a month, and she's wondering if it's too late to uh, pop to get it populated on on all of these sites that the book sales sites that you recommended. Oh, in a month? No. Absolutely not. So this was Linda? Yes. I mean, this, this question from Linda? Yes. Linda, here's what you're going to do. <laughs> um, get your ebook listed as an ebook pre order. Okay. Smashwords has been, has been offering ebook pre orders since June of 2013. And by far, without question, ebook pre orders have become the best book launch marketing tool we've seen since the launch of Smashwords back in 2008. With an ebook pre order, if you're not familiar with what an ebook pre order is, an ebook pre order um, allows readers to reserve a copy of your book ahead of its public release day. 
So if you're, what's today? Today's the 18th. So if you're, for example, releasing your book on July 18th, and you, you could put your book up as an ebook pre-order today and start accumulating orders before your book is even released. Here's how it works. When a reader goes to a retailer, and we are distributing ebook pre-orders to Kobo, Apple, and Barnes and Noble, the way it works is when a reader goes to reserve the copy of that book, they put down their credit cards. Yet that credit card isn't charged until your book's release date. Now, this gets really interesting, especially at Apple Books, because Apple Books, Barnes and Noble, and Kobo, they'll enable you to accumulate pre-orders for up to 12 months. But Apple is unique because Apple counts every ebook pre-order as a full sale. Okay, so hold that thought because ebook pre-orders based on our data sell better than books that are simply uploaded on release date. Now, let's talk about sales rankings and bestseller lists for a moment here. Everybody essentially knows how bestseller lists work. Um, the more sales volume you have, the more units you sell, the higher your chances to go up in sales ranking and the better your chances to end up on bestseller lists. But here's the thing. The most recent sales weigh more heavily than sales that have occurred in the more distant past. In other words, sales that have occurred in the last 12 to 24 hours are going to weigh much more heavily in bestseller rankings than sales that have occurred in the last two weeks or two months. When it comes to ebook pre-orders, especially at Apple, if you have a month's worth of pre-orders, it's like you can have this concentration of months and months worth of sales all hitting on day one of your book being released. And that is what can cause a pop in your sales rankings and possibly get you onto a bestseller list when your book is released. Does that all sink in? And, and let me know if you have a follow-up question to that, Linda. So yes, you should upload your book now and start accumulating orders ahead of time. And if you have a pre-order, then your book is eligible to also do a pre-sale. Wow, it's clear you uh, have a lot of content in your brain. <laughs> You're amazing. I've, I've given a lot of presentations <laughs> over the years. And you know, the funny thing is, let me tell you, how long have I been doing public speaking? Probably since 2012, because Mark Coker, our founder, was stretched so thin and he asked me if I could take on some of the public speaking duties. And even though every cell in my body screamed, no, I'm, I was just scared to death of public speaking. I said, yes, um, and it's been a joy. But it, eventually these things start to sink into your brain. And even if I'm angst ridden every time before I get up in front of a crowd, um, happily, the data is still there somewhere. <laughs> I think you gave a team talk at Mechanics Institute in 2012, because that's when I started hosting uh, writers' stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Siddique has a question. Would you recommend, is there an ebook authoring tool that you recommend? An like, ebook authoring tool? Like ebook design or some sort of software that helps authors package their, their ebook? I, I think, and to state it humbly, I think you're better served asking some of your author friends because I, I hear about different tools all the time and I really don't have the experience with one in particular to recommend one in particular. So I'd, I'd feel more comfortable suggesting that you ask author friends or authors that you um, respect and whose work that you love, what kind of tool that they used. And I just wanted to point out that I did post the Smashwords style guide uh, there, it's a free ebook that's available on Smashwords' website. I put a link to that in the in the chat, which might I haven't looked at it in detail, but that might provide some guidance as to the things that you need to uh, to think of when publishing your ebook. It, it, it will. As actually, will there be a, a follow up email that you send to all the attendees, Taryn? Because there are more links. There could be. I could add. Oh, there could be. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I should have had all my the links ready but if there if there could be to attendees of this event um i could add some links to that for the formatting guide um the style guide is our formatting guide and that's what can walk you through the step-by-step -step process if you're considering publishing an ebook for the first time that will help you get there we also have our book marketing guide that has 65 tips and tricks um, to help you reach more readers and then we have our free best practices guide that um 
that has, I think it's 30 best practices from the best selling self published ebook authors um, to give you even, even more things to consider on, on how to do things right. Um, that's great. Uh, we can certainly send out another email and we can also post it. when we post the video on our YouTube channel, we can include that okay. material in the comments. Um, let's see. Julie has a question about royalties. KU royalties are exceeding her ebook sales and she'd love to be less dependent on Amazon. Can Smashwords help with this? Yeah, um, gosh, we, we were hearing this from more and more authors who um, who are dependent on on Amazon because if you're exclusive to a, a single retailer, think about what a financial advisor. Uh, this, I'm saying this for people who are not familiar with Kindle Unlimited or Amazon's exclusivity options. Um, a financial advisor would advise you or would plead with you not to put all of your eggs in one basket because if the market changes, you you essentially are out of luck. And the same holds true with exclusivity options at the retailer and at Amazon in particular because if the rules change there, all the algorithms there, sales can suddenly um, take a dive. I would also caution authors who are all in at Amazon, if you're getting 80 to 90% of your revenue or even more than that from a single retailer, you're no longer an independent author. You are a dependent author on that single retailer. So to answer your question, I'm sorry for babbling, but I just wanna put that word of caution out there too. Um, we can help you, absolutely. But when you leave Amazon and just start to go wide for the first time, going wide means putting your books everywhere at all of the other retailers. Expect there to be a little bit of time before you start to gain traction for your books at these other retailers. Give it a little bit of time for the readers to find your books at those other retailers and help those readers find your books. So on your website, when you're linking to books at Amazon, link to books that you have for sale at Apple and at Barnes Noble and at Kobo and at Scribd and everywhere so that you're making it ridiculously simple for your readers to click away from your website or blog and to click into the exact um, page where your book exists at each one of those retailers. I hope that helps. That does help. Um, there's another question from Ronald, back to back matter. Is it possible to change back matter in a book that's been published for a couple of years now? Yes, it is. Yep. Yep, as the author of your book, uh, if you're self-publishing and if you control the rights to that book, you can update the back matter, you can update your manuscript, you can update all of that metadata, your price, your description, everything as often as you like for free. You know, I just wanted to point out something that you said about being an independent writer versus mm -hmm. a dependent writer yeah. or author. Um, and I, I really think that in these changing times, you have to constantly think about that <laughs> and not let yourself become dependent or complacent on the tools that maybe are the easiest tools or services that are perhaps the easiest for you to use because things change so rapidly and you might make more money, sell more books, get more readers if you roll with the times. <laughs> Yeah, you want to think um, long term. Is short term short term game gain? Uh, um, it's it's very enticing. Everybody wants it, especially when you hear about author friends um, who have who have done it. But if you play the long game, if you think about this more as um, you know, as a marathon instead of instead of a sprint, you can weather some of the storms as they will inevitably come along. And to put some historical perspective on it, if I may, just remember, it wasn't very long ago when the book publishing industry was a print-centric industry and the largest traditional publishers controlled it. They determined which books they felt um, were good enough or rather commercially viable enough to be turned into published books, which meant that they determined which writers they felt were good enough to become 
published authors. And they also controlled distribution into different areas of the globe um, and to specific regions of the country. And they determined which books would land into which physical brick and mortar bookstores, which meant that they also kind of determined what books readers had the opportunity to see. But then with the advent of eBooks and digital publishing tools, suddenly any author anywhere in the world who had access to a computer um, and the internet could self publish and distribute an eBook. And suddenly authors were free. They celebrated their newfound liberation and independence. Unfortunately, what we're seeing now is authors kind of putting the shackles back on and going all in to a single retailer. I, there's a question here. We get asked a lot at the writers conference. Okay. Um, and I think if I'm interpreting Ruth's question right, is it better to put your book up on, let's say, Smashwords or any of the ebook retailers and then go to a big five publisher? Are there even big fives left anymore? <laughs> there's probably big two left. Big four. <laughs> Um, that's, that's a personal decision. Um, if you self-publish an ebook and it performs very well, then you have the validation to take to an agent or to a traditional publisher later and say, look at this book. I self-published it six months ago or a year ago. It has X amount of sales. Um, can we talk? Versus if you self-publish a book and it has a couple of dozen sales. So if you're going to consider self-publishing, um, you, you have to put in the work. Self-publishing does have its advantages. Um, it's faster. So if your book is completed, and by completed, I mean that you've had it professionally edited and revised and it's formatted and it's really ready to be published as an ebook, you can publish in a matter of minutes, literally minutes versus the months and months it may take you to go the traditional publishing route. Uh, you have higher royalties, you have access to a global distribution and that sort of thing. So self-publishing does have its advantages. But with that said, I would also caution you that self-publishing perhaps isn't for everyone. Um, it, it takes a lot of work and it's going to take some entrepreneurial spirit, but if you're willing and if you're determined, you can be a successful self-published author. You have to go through the best practices. Don't follow the get rich quick schemes or the flash in the pants um, marketing schemes that you may come across as an author. Play the long game, nurture your career, build traction with those readers and you will grow your readership over the years. I love that you've always been honest about you've got to do the work and you've got to have a good product you just don't put anything up and think you know you've done your job you haven't as an author you've got to put up your best product and someone had a question marcia about she tried self-publishing at smashwords but she couldn't get the formatting right is there someone at smashwords who can help you with that yeah if you get stuck marcia um send an email to our service department um, you can find them by clicking on the little question mark button at the top of any Smashwords page or on the support link on the bottom of any Smashwords page. If you're really, really stuck, they can, you know, help you through that. If you're, um, I'm assuming that you've already tried our formatting guide. That's the style guide that Taryn was talking about earlier. Um, that will help walk you through that step-by-step -step process. But if you find yourself either with zero time or if you find yourself pulling your hair out and you just don't want to format yourself anymore, we maintain a list of low cost formatters at Smashwords. So if you go to smashwords.com slash list, L-I-S-T, you'll find a, a, a list of low cost formatters and even cover designers who they're not Smashwords employees and we don't receive a kickback from them. They're just formatters and cover designers who have been recommended by other Smashwords authors through the years. Um, it's, it's pretty inexpensive and it may be the best way for you to go about it. That's amazingly helpful. That's great information. Okay. I put that in the chat space. Okay. Um, well, I, the formatter wasn't able to do it. I, I think it's harder. Maybe it's just harder to publish um, a kind of a step-by-step 
a self-help book that has picture images in it and a lot of subtitles. Is that harder on smash words than a, say a fiction book or a book of essays? If it's, if it's just text and, and some images, um, that's relatively easy. Like say if it was a memoir type, type of book, where it gets a little more challenging is a book um, that has lots of tables, graphs, and charts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, or, um, or like a children's book where the text itself is embedded into the image. Um, in that respect, if you, could, if you could liberate the text from the image, or if you can make the image a full page in itself, that's something that some authors of children's books and other fixed format books will do. But if you're, but if you're saying um, that it is, it's roughly text with pictures with some captions, that's not too difficult. That's, that's doable. Can you explain it a little bit more? I'll, I'm curious to see um, what the genre is and the types of, of, of problems that your formatter was encountering. The genre is self-help and okay. books called Marriage Meetings for Lasting Love, which is a step-by-step -step guide to hold a weekly marriage meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the format, I, there was someone who was recommended to me to format for Smashwords, and she ended up giving up. It, it, it just didn't, she didn't seem to have the ability or Smashwords, uh, did, uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work. And I did end up getting traditionally published and... Um, including the ebook and the print book. And uh, so uh, that's what happened. But I might want to do a future mm -hmm. book on my own. And uh, I'd like to know if, if, if I should stick to something like a very simple format. We generally recommend the simpler, the better when it comes to ebooks, because to, to really explain, if you think about a, a book that's in print, Print is a fixed format. And what I mean by fixed format is that the designer of that book could, the, the, the designer of the book basically knows where every word is going to appear on every page. But when it comes to eBooks, your readers are going to change the look and feel of your book. And the devices themselves are going to change the look and feel of your book. Because those words, your readers are gonna have the, the opportunity to increase or decrease the font size. Um, and those words are going to have to kind of morph down for smaller screens and they're going to have to go from portrait mode into landscape mode and, and so forth. So the simpler, the better when it comes to eBooks. But even with, with that said, your book doesn't sound overly complicated. If you have um, a copy of it in Microsoft Word, for example, and you want to talk through it and discuss some options, I'm happy to, to work with you outside of this if you want to shoot me an email. All right. Well, thank you. Maybe for my next book. Okay. Thank you for your question. Appreciate your answer. All right. Maria has a question. Um, she has a, it looks like, sounds like a traditionally published book okay. that is negotiated with Amazon and Barnes and Noble to sell the book. But she noticed that her book is also being sold through other online sites, especially in the UK and in France. Mm -hmm. However, she hasn't received any notification of these sales, and she's just wondering how she can track her own book sales statistics. Hmm. <laughs> mm. um, well, I, sometimes it depends on the retailers. Um, at Smashwords, we give a, our, our authors a dashboard so they can see how their books are performing at each of the different retailers to whom we distribute. Um, sometimes the retailers are a little bit slow in reporting back. Some of them enable daily sales reports, um, but I've heard of instances where some of the retailers are, ta are taking days and sometimes weeks to report back when authors are seeing sales come in. So I, I don't have a, a clear cut, um, super concise answer for you other than to say probably what you've already done and that is going to the retailers themselves and trying to you know, identifying yourself as the author or working with your publisher to go directly to the retailers and ask them you know, what's up, when are, we, when are you going to report these figures to us? 
So when someone publishes with Smashwords, they're automatically uploaded to all these e-tailers? They're not automatically uploaded. So when someone publishes to Smashwords, they have the option of getting their book distributed beyond Smashwords. So, and you, you can pick and choose which retailers you want your book distributed to. You can choose to go everywhere. Or if you're an author who says, well, I'm going to upload directly to Barnes and Noble and Apple myself, but I want to use Smashwords to go to everybody else, then you can do that too. It's completely, it's up to you. It's flexible. We're flexible. <laughs> We're nice people over here. <laughs> You are nice people there. Um, let's take one more question. Julie Brown has asked kind of a technical question because I have no idea what she's referring to, but uh, uh -oh. can, can we use vellum format with SWDs? Yes, you should be able to use vellum. Some of our, um, some of our, our, a lot of our authors are using vellum and then what they'll do is they'll export an EPUB and then they'll, directly upload that EPUB um, instead of a Microsoft Word doc to our platform. And from what I've heard, that seems to work just fine. I would just say Vellum is a fabulous, I've, I've used it quite a few times and I mm -hmm. love it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I've, I've heard really good things about Vellum. Kind of and pretty intuitive, not a big learning curve on it. Now is Vellum, I just want to ask, is Vellum still only for the Mac platform or? No, um, I, use, I have Mac, I use it on my Mac but I believe they make a version for uh, the PC. PC? Oh, okay, good. For desktop, yeah, for okay. non-Mac products. Gotcha. And the price has stayed, the price is around 250, 200, 250, and it stayed pretty consistent over the, since I last looked. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we have covered all of our questions. Um, I do want to announce that we, I think we've decided we'll go ahead and send a follow-up email to everyone who's registered with some additional links and content from Smashwords is pre-made pre um, uh, service guides that might help people when planning their ebook. Yep. Um, publication journey. <laughs> you got to plan first before you actually go, right? <laughs> yes, planning is good. <laughs> and I'd love to thank you, Jim. People are just saying how wonderful everything was. And oh. every time I hear you, I've probably heard you four or five times over the years. Poor thing. Uh, you have great content <laughs> and you're nice to boot. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 again, I sincerely want to thank everybody who's joined today. I really, really appreciate it. I'm so happy that so many people showed up. Um, if any of you didn't get a chance to ask your question or if a question pops into your head later, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm at jim at smashwords.com and smashwords doesn't sell anything. Um, so I'm not going to try to sell you some $20,000 publishing package, but I will answer your questions to the best of my ability. If you have questions tonight, tomorrow, two weeks from now, feel free to shoot me an email. Thank you. For those of you who don't know that Jim and Smashwords have been great supporters of the San Francisco Writers Conference since the beginning. We are they partners provide, in crime. Yes, yeah, they provide the lovely badges that you wear and mm -hmm. just- Oh, I should have had one here. Oh, uh, I, I probably have one somewhere. You probably anyway, have about four um, or five of them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, next week we're gonna have John Shea, who's going to talk about his book about Willie Mays. It's 24. Life Stories from the Say Hey Kid. And then, uh -huh, just can announce this, July 10th, we're gonna have Catherine Sands, who's an incredible literary agent, who, um, here's one of those badges. <laughs> 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 um, who's gonna talk about um, traditional publishing. So we're trying to hit all bases, but boy, you hit it out of the park today, Jim. Aww. I bet you say that to all the speakers. <laughs> nah, just some of them. <laughs> yeah, we are um, looking forward to next Thursday's talk um, with John Shea because it's rare that we have nonfiction writers come, um, at least at Mechanics Institute. It seems like we always have fiction, but I think John Shea's book is kind of amazing because it um, it's a, it's it's it was written in tandem with Willie Mays himself and the the uh, 
means of folding in John Shea's writing and Willie Mays's writing, I think is really great. Um, and uh, anyway, thank you all for coming. And I'm so, uh, hope you all stay cool on this warm day. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. All right. Bye. Thanks, Tim. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.